really quick video here, just doing an explanation of how transit routing works in Azure between VPN and ExpressRoute. In this case, I've got a IPsec branch connected. It's a Cisco ASA on-prem IPsec into a virtual WAN hub connected to a VPN gateway inside of the VWAN hub. I've also got an express route connected data center here in purple, 192.168 range on-prem via the express route, 10.1.200 over here for my IPsec connected branch. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's very common to move data and applications to the cloud and have something left there on-prem that you need to access, but you want to migrate the IPsec head end to Azure. So you sort of close down as much of your on-prem DC as you can, remove the firewalls, etc. that terminate your VPNs, move that function into the cloud, makes it a bit more scalable, probably going to get better performance if you've got a global network because of the span and breadth of the Microsoft backbone. But in this scenario, the green bit here, of course, it needs to access the spoke VNets, which is kind of implicit, but we do have patterns in Azure where we can come into Azure via VPN and go back down express route to meet this scenario where you still need to get something on-prem. I'm going to show you how this works today with VWAN, our virtual WAN. You can also achieve this same pattern if you're using Azure Route Server within a customer managed hub VNet. First thing to highlight here in VWAN, a global level, I've got branch to branch turned on. If I jump on my express route circuit here and look at the routes that I'm learning, I'll give us some clues as to whether this will work first time around or not. We can see a couple of things here. First of all, my branch prefix 10.1.200 is being learned from 10.15.0.12 and .13. I know that they are some of the IP addresses under the covers inside of virtual WAN that I'm using. So my express route circuit knows about my green branch. It's a good start. And of course, my express route circuit also knows about my 192.168 prefix, which is my on-prem DC. The data path looks pretty good there. In a similar fashion, when I jump onto the virtual WAN hub and I check the effective routes there, I see that 192.168.2 being learned from express route as we expect. And also we see the 10.1.200 route which is coming from a VPN connected branch. If I look at my VPN site configuration, there's a couple of things I want to highlight here. The first one is where I've specified my private address space. So I'm looking at the configuration here of my VPN gateway in respect to how it sees the green world. I've referenced the on-prem address space of 10.1.200. And if you've worked with Azure VPN gateways, that'll tell you something, which is I am using static routing here. I'm not using BGP. That's another thing I want to call out in this video is that even though I'm not running BGP across IPsec to my VPN connected branch, I can still benefit from this transit routing. So the BGP here on the purple bit, and there's an element of route exchange happening behind the scenes here in VWAN, but I don't need to run BGP here. My link configuration, relatively straightforward, just specifies the on-prem public IP with no BGP information. A couple of things to note about the VPN configuration inside of virtual WAN here. I don't have traffic selectors configured. What does that mean? Well, as it's a route based VPN, we're quite happy exchanging zero zero. So very wide traffic selectors, which will mean that the the phase two portion of the Ike setup is happy to encrypt anything. And therefore how we designate what gets in the tunnel is purely based on our routing. And as we've talked about, we're using static routing on the Azure side and static routing on-prem. You could choose if you wanted to, to enable BGP to decide what traffic gets into the tunnel. But purely from a traffic selector point of view, we're quite happy to go with zero, zero in this case. The configuration of my Cisco AS on-prem is relatively straightforward as well. It's got a tunnel to a single instance here in virtual WAN, which I know if this instance fails, the PIP will fail over to the other instance. And there's no need to configure more than one tunnel here if we're using static routing. On my ASA, I've got a static route pointing to the tunnel interface, which is virtual tunnel interface one. And the proof is in the pudding, of course. So you see here, I'm looking on my on-prem data center host. This is in the purple box. And I can see that I'm pinging a host here in the top box that lives in Azure and getting a return 
round trip time of about 30 milliseconds, which I know is about right considering the location of my data center and the location of Azure. But then when I look at my ping from on-prem data center into Azure back out to the branch, that latency is almost double because I know that I'm going to into Azure and then back out and travel in some distance. So the reason why this end-to-end -end packet flow works is ultimately on the VPN gateway, when we statically define the green on-prem address space, because we have branch to branch turned on, that gets advertised to the express route gateway, which passes it down to on-prem. So even though we're using static routing up here, it's still dynamically advertised on-prem. And in the opposite direction behind the scenes here, all of the routes that my express route gateway learns are shared with my VPN gateway. And even though that VPN gateway is not dynamically advertising all of those routes to the green box, as long as my green box here has a static route back across the tunnel to at least get the traffic to the VPN gateway, that's sufficient to make this transit routing design work. And based on my experience, there are quite a lot of scenarios still in 2022 where you do want to run statically defined communication between your remote third party, whether it's your own branch or an external company, and Azure. You don't want that complete dynamic nature. I suppose the main point here is to show you how you can meet that requirement, but also leverage transit routing despite not using BGP end-to-end. -end. If you have any questions on this design, then please drop them in the chat. Thank you.